Hi, good night. I'm Denise J. Charles, and I'm with you again for another segment in the series, Read With Me. We are at reading number four. And uh, if you remember, if you were following me from the, from the beginning, um, I said that my book, Tonight I'm a Butterfly, Celebrating Seasons of Change, it has 61 readings, and I promised to do seven of them. Now, seven from 61 leaves 54. So I am still encouraging you to get a copy of my book. I promise it is going to be life-changing. And I've been really getting some good reviews from others who have read the book. I've had friends purchase the book. I've had people that I don't know purchase the book. I've had people recommend the book to others. I've had women buy it for other women. And it's not just a book for women, by the way. Men can gain quite a lot of insight from reading this book as well. Uh, as a matter of fact, my husband and I have been enjoying on mornings, spending time doing a reading and reflecting. And this morning, we read Stepping Into the Elevator. And that's the reading I'm going to share with you today because it absolutely inspired me. Never mind, I wrote it. It absolutely encouraged me. And we were able to talk about it. We were able to see the connections in our lives and in our stories. And I'm sure as you listen to this particular reading that you will be encouraged as well. So let's go. Stepping Into the Elevator, reading number 38. A ship is always safe at the shore, but that is not what it was built for. Albert Einstein. Do you know whether you're going up, down, or whether you're at a standstill? Elevators are wonderful tools of modern invention. They move us through tall buildings at just the touch of a button. Our decision to move up or down in a lift often saves us time and energy and gets us exactly where we need to be in a timely manner. But stepping into the elevator is a decisive move. It's a deliberate act of the will, which says, I need to move to a particular point. If we apply this notion to our lives, can we say that we always know where we need to be? Are our lives ever as decisive or do we find ourselves just coasting along aimlessly, unsure of our next move? Do we act on our lives or do we allow life to just happen to us? There is much talk today about purpose, planning and destiny. Each of us wants to know that we do not just exist. We want to really live in ex abundance and exuberance, and we want to experience our best life now. Having a personal mission statement and setting specific achievable goals is laudable. It is like placing our finger on that elevator button because we know exactly which floor we need to go to. It suggests that we know where we are going and, and that we have an idea of how to get there. In an ideal world, this description would fit many of us. As life goes, however, very often we're unsure of where we're going. Even when we have a deep sense that we should be in a particular place, it can seem at times as if the entire universe is conspiring to, to keep us out. So even though we might know that we might make excellent marriage material, a good partner continues to elude us. We might have the conviction that we will make a great leader, but opportunities for leadership seem to pass us by. We may know instinctively that we may make a great parent, yet we fail to conceive. In many respects, we may feel as if we are pressing that elevator button to go up, but the elevator might have its own idea and it continues to plummet down or it refuses to budge, keeping us at a standstill. The perception that there is no upward movement in our lives or that we're stuck in a place of inertia can be a daunting one. It can knock the motivation right out of our gut. It can bring self-doubt and cause us to question our calling and purpose. It is imperative at this time that we keep stepping into that elevator and that we keep pressing those buttons to move upward even when it seems as if the elevator isn't cooperating. This speaks of our not surrendering to setbacks, to us reframing failure 
as delay and to us seeing every lost opportunity as a season to review, regroup and reboot. Sometimes when we fail to proceed to an expected place, for example, a promotion, a marriage, or a loan for our new business, we might actually be receiving a blessing in disguise. Maybe there's more for us to learn on our way up, more grooming to be had, or more personal growth to experience, to strengthen us for the tasks ahead. Maybe we have selected the wrong life partner, bank, or business partner, and the infinite wisdom of God is taking us to a preferred place outside of our own expectations or limited understanding of the future. Stepping into any elevator is a tremendous act of faith and should never stop, even when it doesn't take us where we want to go. When there is a detour to an unexpected floor or the elevator comes to a screeching stop, because of a mechanical flaw, we will likely still step into it the next day, even if with a bit more trepidation or frustration. We expect elevators to work even when we have little knowledge of how they do. In a similar way, we must continue to act on faith and expect it to work for us even when the how of it eludes us. The complexity and beauty of life is not in getting everything we want when we do, but it's in knowing what we deserve and continuing to live like it is already ours. Although circumstances may say otherwise, this is what it means to live by an active faith that compels us to keep stepping to each new opportunity. Now, this was so inspirational. It was so motivational for me and for my husband as we shared, because very often our lives are a collection of disappointments and um, things happen. You know, things don't always pan out the way we expect them to. You know, I know there, there are some friends of mine who might have said, well, um, by a, a particular age, I expected to be married with 2.5 children, or by a certain age, I expected to have my dream home. Sometimes I might say that of myself because even though we have our home, you know, you might want a bigger home. You might want a better home. You may want to live somewhere else. You know, I have a dream of living right next to the seaside. You know, although the sea is not that far from where I live, I really want to live closer so I can smell it and hear the roaring of the waves and so on as I sleep at night. That is my dream, you know, and each of us has dreams. We have dreams of wanting to achieve and wanting to accomplish certain goals. And sometimes we set ourselves timelines and that's okay, you know. Um, but if we allow every setback, if we allow every disappointment to cause us to feel um, like failures or to feel defeated, then we will, we will stop taking risks. And that is what this, this reading is about. It challenges us to keep taking risks. It challenges us to continue to act with faith, to believe God, to trust him, even when we don't understand the process, when something is delayed and, and, and it seems as if it's taking so long to happen. Sometimes that's a blessing in disguise. I remember there was a job I was in years ago, several, several years ago. It was a secondment and I expected it to last a lot longer than it did and it didn't and I was very disappointed. But as I look back, I'm so thankful for that opportunity, for that pause that God placed where that job was concerned. Because when I paused with that job and went back to my substantive post, that pause allowed me to do so much more than I would have been able to do if I had stayed in that job. I, I started my writing journey. I started my blogging. I, I became very connected to lots of people overseas with respect to giving me exposure to my writing. I was asked to write for international magazines. I appeared on international talk shows in Canada and um, even on the Huffington Post, which is a fairly big thing on the internet. Now, these opportunities were afforded me during that time when I paused. So I want to encourage you not to give up hope, not to lose faith, but to continue to step into the elevator. Now, each of these readings comes with an interactive activity at the end. And this first um, activity encourages us to identify any situation or situations where you exercise faith in order to walk into a new 
or different opportunities. So this reading challenges you to think of occasions when you had to utilize faith because I like to challenge myself and I like to challenge my readers to look into their lives and to see where they line up with respect to what the reading is admonishing them to do. And the second one asks, how has this experience of active faith changed your outlook on life? Because obviously the hope is that as we exercise faith and as we get active and as we, we act on our lives and don't just allow life to happen to us, that it moves us on to the next level of growth. It moves us on to the next level of having trust and having faith in God and in the, the gifts and the, the um. The, the, the gifts and all that he has given to us because he gives us he gives us dreams and um, he gives us ideas so that his will can be operationalized in our lives. So sometimes when we think of things and we think, oh, that's so far fetched. No worry about it. It is God that is investing his purpose and he's allowing it to come to fruition through your thoughts, through your ideas. And I want to encourage you to keep um, looking out for these videos. This has been video number four, and um, we're going to be coming to you soon with video number five. Remember, there are going to be seven of them in all. And I'm, I'm posting them. I've already started posting them on my YouTube channel, um, Living with Dr. Denise Charles. If you haven't yet joined my channel, you haven't subscribed, please find it on YouTube, Living with Dr. Denise Charles. You can subscribe to my channel. And even though I'm posting these videos on Facebook and IGTV, you can go back and you can watch them and you can go over them and go over the points, etc. If you have a copy of my book, you can read it and then you can watch the video or you can watch the video and then read it. Or I'm hoping that these readings on video will encourage you to get a copy of my book. If you want to find out how you can get a copy of my book, reach out to me on 239-7514. I'm also on WhatsApp. I'm on social media. It's easy to get to me. You can message me on Messenger and I will get a copy of this great book to you. So thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Read With Me and I look forward to seeing you next time. Blessings.